You've been very kind to me. No, wait. I've been awake half the night thinking about things. I'm sorry too, Nan. I haven't treated you very gentle since you've been here, have I? It wasn't right to take it out on you because I was unhappy. I've liked it, having you here all these months. I'm glad you stayed. I was wondering, perhaps we could go out somewhere together. Just the two of us, tonight. All right. Yeah, but that was all right. <laughs> You said it was all girls here. It is. You want to look a bit more carefully. Oh. <laughs> Did you used to come here as a boy? Now and then. So he slapped down his sovereign, and Susie and me fluff up for half an hour and then tip the velvet while the gent looked on. <laughs> it's the nice work we've ever had. We'd have done it for nothing, if only you'd known it. <laughs> Tipping the velvet? Whatever can that be? You don't know. It sounds like something to do with dressmaking or millinery. I don't think it can be. Nobody would pay to watch that. <laughs> it isn't. Well, what then? Oh. Also, I understand. So you managed to get her out of the house. Good for you, Nan Ashley. I kept telling Flory this is the place for her. Oh, Flo. In such a state. He's coming here tonight. I met this girl the other day in the office at the sewage works, sitting in a ray of sunshine. I said, are you Sue Bridehead? My name's Jude. She gave me a little smile and she took my hand and I knew that I was in love again. Who are you? Yeah, well, it's about time you was in love again too. Perhaps you can show her the way, Uncle. Here she comes. Yeah, well, I won't bring her over if you don't mind. I want her all to myself. Excuse me, sweetheart, but uh, didn't you used to be Nan King that worked the halls with Kitty Butler? Yes, I was Nan King. Who wants to know it? They are. What did I tell you? It is her. Oh, come and give us a song, Nan. No, no, I'm finished with all that. Ah, oh, you was the best, you and her. Half the girls in London was in love with you. Me and Jenny had got your picture by our bed. Oh, come on, just one song, eh? Just to remind us. Well, go on. I'd love to hear you. Oh, all right, then. Oh, I can go out on the town to all the grand hotels. Going at large till midnight with all the London swells, but it ain't any good at all. I can't help remembering. Oh, Rosie, do you remember? The promises we made only last September. Why did I have to go away? We said goodbye with a tear and a sigh. And whispered all the pretty things that sweethearts say. You promised. Delightful to hear you again, and in such good voice. I shan't detain you, but if you are ever interested in a return to the boards, I can guarantee you excellent billing in any of my theatres. My card? Good evening to you, Miss King. Mom? Who was that? Mr Charles Frobisher. He only owns six theatres in the West End. So you really did? I did, and maybe I will again. 
Yeah, good night, for A, and mind you take care of her. <laughs> Here come the Toms. Look at them, the dirty cows. How'd you like to see what a proper man can do? Come on. Who's first? Ignore him. Just keep going. Come on, girls. We'll show you a thing or two. You? You can hardly get across the road, let alone get a cock stand. Show us a thing or two, I don't think so. Now get off home to your wife before I put you over my knee and spank you. Come on, Flo. Oh, Lord, they're coming. last night. Oh, don't say you wish it hadn't happened. I couldn't bear that. I was determined it shouldn't happen. I thought I could never care about another girl after Lillian. But when it came to it, I think you put a spell on me with that song you sang. That was the idea. And you were really on the halls? Do you really mean to go back? Well, if Charlie Frobisher thinks I could still do it, I think I might give it a go. Would you mind? I think I'd be rather proud to be a friend of Nan King's. And very happy to be the lover of Nan Astley. Flo? <laughs> Flo? Oh, God. Oh, no, I thought you'd there. disturb you, Nan. You don't know where Flo might have... Oh, there you are. I was wondering if you could have Cyril for a few minutes, just while I... Get, sh get shaved. Here we are. Well... I'll just... get shaved. <laughs> oh, Flo! Your brother's just about the best kind of man, I think. <laughs> Okay, now when we go around 
that evening, we put the truckle bed back in the attic and I moved my night things to Florence's room and I put my gown beneath her pillow. And I felt I had come home at last. Right. Now, I've had enough of this. I've had just about as much as I can take. Look about you at our great places and public buildings, at our country houses and our... Oh, damn. Our factories and our empire. Yeah, factories and empire. Yeah, thank, thanks, Nan. That was very good till then. Yeah. Well, get on. Right. What is the rich man's wealth but robbery? Gradually, I was drawn into the centre of their lives. I had never given a thought to politics, but now I couldn't escape it, it seemed. There was going to be a big rally at Victoria Park. Florence was helping to organise it, and Ralph was to speak at it. And my own life was opening up as well. This way, ladies. <laughs> it's the best dressing room in the house, Miss King. I trust it meets with your approval. Yes. I think it'll do me very nicely. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Flo. <laughs> what is the rich man's wealth but robbery? They steal the land and set a wall about it. They steal the fruits. Flo, please be quiet. How's a man to think? He steals the fruits. The, the, fruit, the fruits? of our labour and obliges us to buy them back from him. Good! Oh, I've got a girl, she's as pretty as a picture, she's the best pal in the world. Hello, Nan. Sorry, Jimmy, could you give us five minutes? Tommy, five minutes. Top of the bill, I see. Charlie Frobish has done you proud. Do you remember when you first came to see me, I wonder? What do you want, Kitty? You haven't forgotten me, then. I was afraid you might have. Well, I wanted to see you again, of course. And if you knew how I tried to find you, it was as though he'd vanished off the face of the earth. I was afraid you might have harmed yourself. It was you that harmed me, Giddy. I'm so sorry, Nan. It doesn't matter now. No. No, I can see. You're doing ever so well. And you, are you still married to Walter? You heard about that? Yes. Yes, I am. But well, after a fashion, if you know what I mean. It's what you might call a... A marriage of convenience. Nan, so long, I've thought about what I might say if I ever found you. I must, I must tell you now. I'm not sure I want to hear it. <laughs> Would you come back to me, Nan? Oh. Aren't you forgetting you're a married woman? Oh, that needn't matter. Walter's very good. He, he lets me do very much as I like. And, we were only little girls. No! We were always careful because you wanted it that way. You were always half-hearted, Kitty. And I was all for you. And now I've found someone who's all for me. She isn't me, though. Is she, Nan? No. She's very different from you. I made a mistake with Walter. If you were to come back to me, I would leave him. It would be just you and me. I'd make it all up to you, Nana. I promise. I've never stopped loving you, Nan. You broke 